the return of Christ. Then people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. He will send out his angels, and from every direction under the sky they will gather those whom God has chosen. Mark 13, 26 through 27. We, however, are citizens of heaven. We look forward to the Lord Jesus Christ coming from heaven as our Savior through his power to bring everything under his authority. He will change our humble bodies and make them like his glorified body. He will turn us into glorious lights, mortality into immortality. The Lord has given me many dreams about that. It is so amazing. I can't even begin to describe to you what it feels like as I was watching my body change, my hands, my arms, my body change from mortality into immortality. I became light and then I flew up towards the heavens with such joy, unexplainable, indescribable joy, just flying up into the heavens, shouting the whole time, I want to see Jesus, I want to see Jesus, I want to see Jesus. Oh brothers and sisters, there's nothing like being in the presence of the King of Glory and knowing that you belong to Him and seeing His promises in His words that I'm reading to you come to pass in your life, whether in real life right now in our physical natural realm or through spiritual dreams, prophetic dreams and visions that God gives us. And he does give us those spiritual dreams to edify us, to encourage us, to build us up, to build our faith up, to build the body of Christ, the bride, the church of Jesus Christ, to edify one another. So that's why I'm doing these videos to bring you the word of God because faith comes by the hearing of the Word of God. Amen. We must run to the Word of God. We must build ourselves up eight daily, daily with the Word of God. So anyways, that was Philippians 3, 20, 21. He will continue to give you strength until the end so that no one can accuse you of anything on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I definitely, desperately need his strength. God faithfully keeps his promises. He called you to be partners with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 through 9. May the God who gives peace make you holy in every way. May he keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body blameless when our Lord Jesus Christ comes. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 24 Then the man of sin will be revealed and the Lord Jesus will destroy him by what he says When the Lord Jesus comes his appearance will put an end to this man Hallelujah I cannot wait Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 You too must be patient don't give up hope the Lord will soon be here James 5 8 you guys I need this encouragement this word this exhortation so desperately if I could just be transparent for a moment I sometimes feels like I have this oppression this feeling of hopelessness lifelessness it's like my heart is so far removed from anything and everything and everyone of this world. It's like I don't even want to be here anymore. It's like I am done with this world. Although God is not done with me here. But I am just being honest with you. There is nothing, no money, no pleasure, no comfort, no promises of man, no luxury, no materialism, no fancy food, clothing, car, house sex, drugs, alcohol, entertainment. There's nothing of this world I desire. When I say nothing, I mean nothing. 
and I'm just so ready to go home. I am. I'm just so ready to go home to be with my Lord and Savior. I don't care anything about acquiring more, you know, homes, more wealth, more status, more anything of this world. My heart is so yearning, eagerly yearning to be with my Lord and Savior. And I mean that with all my heart. So please lift me up as I'm also praying for you because I know you guys are going through the same things um, from day to day. All of us, any one of us that belongs to heaven, it says clearly that those of us that's been born of God, you know, we're just passing through this place. We're just passing through to tell the world about our Lord and Savior. We're not here. This is not our home. It is not our permanent home. Amen. We are of the world, but not in the world. We're from the world. God has chosen us out of the world, and we praise Him for that. So, anyways, I just want it to be absolutely transparent and, and clear with you. I know many people don't understand this, but I'm confident that many of you are listening, that are listening and watching this video and many of my videos understands you know it's almost time to go home and we do have work to do so therefore we must rely upon the power the breath of the holy spirit to quicken us revive us to life you know to be busy about our father's business exhorting compelling calling others to come to him amen while we still have time we can't just sit around and just sing kumbaya, praise the Lord, you know, patting each other, exhorting each other, um, and not do the work of our Father. You know, it, the Lord Jesus Christ gave us many parables, what the kingdom of God is all about. And there are consequences when we ignore His command, amen, to be busy about His Father's business. Because loving God is obedience to God, obedience to the Word of God. We cannot just say we love him and know him and care nothing whatsoever about what he has told us to do. Amen. Because love is obedience according to Jesus, according to the word of God. And that is the authority over our lives, the word of God. The Lord isn't slow to do what he promised, as some people think. Rather, he is patient for your sake. He doesn't want to destroy anyone, but wants all people to have an opportunity to turn to him and change the way they think and act. That's called repentance. God desires, God calls, God requires for repentance, repentance and faith. Peter said, repent, amen, and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If there's no repentance, there is no forgiveness. There is no salvation. So repentance is the first step. Jesus come, came to us and died for us on the cross of Calvary. And he bid us to come to him, to meet him at the cross. And bid us to die to our sins and to self. All selfish desires that is of the flesh. If we live according to the flesh, we will die, his word tells us. And what is the flesh? Is everything that is against, that's warring against the Spirit of God. Amen. It's the sins of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, you know, the worship of material things, uh, created things, and also the worship of theology that is man-made, um, doctrines that are man-made, demon doctrines, religion that is man-made, that is outside of the word and the will of Jesus Christ. And if we study the word of our Lord, we will not be confused. We will not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine from all those denominations that lead so many astray and you've heard me talk about that so many times so i'm not going to repeat it now dear children live in christ to be in christ is to be in the word of god is to do the father's will is to follow his commandment and his commandment says go and preach this gospel baptizing 
all in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Then when he appears, we will have confidence. And when he comes, we won't turn from him in shame. If you know that Christ has God's approval, you also know that everyone who does what God approves of has been born from God. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28 through 29. You cannot say that you are in Christ and born of the Spirit of God if you have no care or concerns about the living Word of God and obeying the Word of God. To be in Christ is to be in the Word of God, obeying it. Because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and dwell among us. And that is John chapter 1. And um, Jesus was the Word of God that became flesh and dwell among us. Jesus is the Word of God. God in His Word are one. You can never separate them. You can never say that I am a Christian. I am a disciple of Christ, a follower, a believer of Christ, and care nothing at all whatsoever about what the Word of God says, reading it, learning it, knowing it, much less obeying it. Let us not deceive, deceive ourselves, and let us not let others deceive us. Amen? And deception is running rampant. Anyways, let me try to turn the page. It's so beautiful out here, guys. So breezy and cool. Look, he is coming in the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. Every tribe on earth will mourn because of him. This is true. Amen. Revelation 1-7. I'm coming soon. I will bring my reward with me to pay all people based on what they have done. So those of you who claims one scripture that we are saved by grace and not by works, well, I highly exhort you, encourage you to be bold enough, to be straight and upfront, honest enough with yourself, with God Almighty, and run to the Word of God and study the Word of God from cover to cover. And if you don't have time to read through the Old Testament, at least, at least, the very least, do yourself a huge favor. Study the New Testament, especially the words that comes out of the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. And once you've done that, with a heart of sincerity and honesty, asking the Holy Ghost to reveal his truth to you, you will no longer be bound to your religious deception that you have heard, that you have accepted without going to God personally and finding the truth out for yourself. For his truth shall set you free. Amen. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So if you're comfortable in believing what you have held on to for decades based on what somebody else told you and you have no desire to seek God's truth, God's face, God's heart for yourself, then I'm sad for you. It clearly clearly states that you have no desire to draw close to the lover of your heart and soul, your maker, your creator, your redeemer, who gave his life up for you. If his spirit lives inside of you, the Holy Spirit, I promise you, he will work the desire in your heart to draw close to God, to know and grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit came to glorify and magnify the Father and the Son. If the Holy Spirit of God is inside you, you will have a hunger and a thirst and desire for truth and righteousness. You will not be content being spoon-fed by a man or a woman on the pulpit somewhere. You will desire to draw close to him. What good son and daughter is happy with um, knowing about their father and mother from somebody else and have no true genuine desire to draw close to their parents, to know them, fellowship with him, enjoy them, hang out with them, talk to them. You know, there is no good children that does that. 
none and there is no good father that does not desire to have a close intimate fellowship walk relationship with his or her sons and daughters none our father is a good good father he loves us so so much so deeply i can't even describe the love of god to you because i haven't fully understand it myself he showed me a dream last year of his irresistible intense constant unconditional love for those who reject him for sinners who will not repent for the rich folks who will not lay down their riches to follow him his heart was filled of love for them not judgment but love but he would not force them to lay down their lives to pick up their cross to deny their self and sin their addictions their wealth and riches he could not force them he created us with a sovereign will to choose because we were made in the image of god after his likeness with a sovereign will to choose to love him or to reject him and to deny him and to walk away from him and it was the most beautiful dreams i've ever had of the love of god and they walked away some were sad because they knew that he was a good god they knew that his love for them was genuine and pure but they could not lay down their addictions their cigarettes their alcohol their pride of life their comfort their hobbies everything that was offered to them through this world their pleasure their sin they would not lay it down to have him eternally and it was really sad but beautiful at the same time to have a glimpse of god unconditional love regardless of what we choose whether we reject him or deny him but i want to warn you that those who reject him by not laying down their lives by not laying down the sin of the flesh by not laying down the wealth and riches of this world you cannot go where he is there is a place that he has created where all the evil wicked angels will go and every one that rejects his love his holiness and righteousness his heaven his plan of salvation which is come to the cross repent and receive the gift of the holy spirit you cannot go into heaven with your addictions you cannot go into heaven with your lust and love for the things of the world he is coming back jesus christ is coming back for those who are pure hearted perfect hearted towards him loyal hearted towards him who are eagerly yearning for his return are you yearning eagerly yearning expecting his return or are you too in love with your sin and the glitz and glamours the wealth and riches of this world is your choice is our choice he chose us and i'm going to choose him every day i choose jesus christ and i pray that you will continue to choose him above all things above your wealth above your status above your hobbies above your um children above your spouses you know he says that if you do not hate your spouse your children your mother your father you are not worthy of me he is not telling us to hate them he is telling us that no one and nothing and nobody can have first place in our heart besides him so don't take his word out of context and don't take my word out of context so i want to end with this let me reread this again i'm coming soon i will bring my reward with me to pay all people based on what they have done i am the a and the z the alpha and the omega the first and the last the beginning and the end revelation 22 verse 12 through 13
and let the bride say, come, Lord Jesus, come.